Here, we have her mind. Structured gel. I had to get away from circuitry. I needed something that could arrange and rearrange on a molecular level, but keep its form when required. A common theme in science fiction is the creation of artificial intelligence. Often this means the creation of an artificial brain, some electrical circuit that mimics the action of the human brain. Now I've always been curious about this, so when I had the opportunity to go to University College London and meet with Dr Ali Jennings, who's just done his PhD in neurophysiology, I wanted to ask him a simple question. Can we build a freight brain? Can we build an artificial intelligence? Uh, oh god! I want to say yes. First, I want to explain why we should be able to. Brain cells run on electricity, right? Your brain, like brain waves, it's electrical waves. And in fact, you can read the electricity off someone's head with an EEG. If your brain cells can work by electricity, then, and we can build electrical circuits, it sort of logically leads on that we should be able to build ourselves an electrical brain. Let's think about an electrical circuit. Now, let's take a simple one, maybe the simplest one that you could do. So we'll have a cell, and in this case, just like a, an electrical cell, and then some wires, and then a resistor. And across that resistor, let's put a, a voltmeter. Well done, GCSE physics. Current passes from this end, the negative end of the battery, it goes round, hits the resistor, some of it goes through and gets to the positive side, depending on how strong the resistor is. And your voltmeter tells you exactly how much current difference there is across the two sides of the resistor. That is a very, 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 very simple model of a cell. A neuron doesn't look like this, a neuron looks something like this. These are our dendrites, and this is our axon. Now that, you may have Notice doesn't really look, that doesn't really look anything like that. But what is crucial about it is that this battery is pumping negative charge in the form of electrons that way. And this cell spends actually a really huge amount of its biological energy pumping negative charge this way into the cell. Now, the current wants to flow back out. But this, the cell membrane, is made of fat, lipids. So fats won't conduct electricity very easily. In our simple cell diagram, the cell uh, membrane is the resistor, and the cell uh, has lots of mechanisms that form the battery. Every time, because you can set this up, so you set up this, uh, this little tiny circuit, across the membrane in the cell, you can actually use changes in that membrane. So you can, if you can, you can measure how much charge is on either side, how negative the inside is compared to the outside, and you can use that to transmit signals. Because if the membrane changes, the membrane voltage changes in a certain way, that will have transmitted a certain signal across the cell. And because charge uh, travels through the cell, uh, you can send that signal very long distances, which is the basis of electrical conductance in the brain. Now that sounds a little bit like, what well, sounds a lot like, the electrical conductance of a circuit. Now you may ask, how in God's name do you claim to know this? Actually, I can show you, if you want to come with me. So how do you record the electrical signals from individual cells? Uh, that's something that Christina's doing right now. That's right. So we are looking at a single neuron, which I've put my electrode into, and we're now able to see all the electrical activity that's happening to that cell right now. We've got an electrical circuit, and in my pipette, which is the big bit of glass that's sticking into that cell, um, so there is a bit of wire in there, that's my main electrode, and we've got on the other side of the cell, just floating around in the bath, we've got a ground electrode. So we're able to measure the potential difference between the electrode and the ground. So if one is more positive than the other, we can see that. If one is more negative than the other, we can see that. So it's a bit like if you were trying to measure across a battery, a 9-volt battery, you'd have a 9-volt difference. 
So we're looking at millivolts, not volts, so it's much smaller, but it's basically the same principle. So in the trace, there's all this mm -hmm. kind of like tiny little bumps going on. And That's right. Like that. And when you get those massive spikes, what is that? Right, so those are action potentials. So what's happening there is that you've got enough glutamatergic transmission that the cell is hitting its action potential threshold, and that means it takes off. It, it starts to take, and take control of its own voltage and it fires off this big positive current. And that's going to be enough to make it release chemical transmission to its neighbours. Every time you see one of these deflections in the current, every time you see a change in the voltage of the cell membrane, what that is, is the synaptic uh, circuitry, if you like, connecting. So it's the point where one cell has made an electrical link to the next one, not a direct electrical link, but by releasing neurotransmitter, uh, it has triggered an, another electrical impulse in a neighbouring cell. So it's the beginnings of a circuit, it's connecting two parts of the circuit together. And if you see the kind of the, the branches between them, the connections that they're making between them, between the individual cells, there's million, millions probably. Millions, yep. Millions of synaptic connections, right? So if you think about that, that's each cell connected to, I don't know, 10, 100 other cells, maybe more? Yep, yep, easily 100, could be a thousand. That next cell will be connected to another cell, and then another, right. cell, another cell, another cell, and they may eventually connect back to the same neuron. Yep. So that is a circuit. That's, that's right. A, that's an electrical circuit. Mm -hmm. But it's not just one, it's thousands, some of which contain neurons which are involved in other electrical circuits. Mm -hmm. So that in miniature, and in a very unorganized way, mm -hmm. is how your brain is structured. So in order to build an artificial brain, you'd need to build an electrical circuit that's incredibly complex. But this actually isn't even the major problem. You know, there's a few billion cells in the brain, so that's not beyond the size of circuits that we can build. You know, we can build something that big. But what it is about is actually a more fundamental kind of difference between uh, the electricity that you find in a circuit and the way that brain cells move charge around. So the flow of charge is electricity, but brain cells do it in a very, very different way. In a circuit, this is made of metal, and the free-ish movement of electrons around this metal band, this metal ring, uh, is the current. So that's the movement of charge. In a biological circuit, there's no metal. So you can't get the same electron flow. It just won't work. There isn't anything to conduct those electrons. So what biology does is the electrons are carried on ions, and ions are charged atoms. So a negative ion has one extra electron, a positive ion has one less electron. So the movement of negative ions is the same thing as the movement of electrons through metal. Because the electrons are still moving, they just happen to be being carried by an ion. The really crucial bit is, and the reason why I was so kind of hesitant about answering the artificial brain question, is that there's not just one kind of ion. So ion come, ions come in as many, as many kinds of ions as there are elements. So our brain only uses three or four. The big ones are sodium, potassium, and chloride. Those three different ions are basically like three different flavours of current. You could transfer your current by chloride, you could transfer it by sodium, or you could transfer it by potassium. So that gives you three different ways of controlling your current and adds an inherent level of complexity to any kind of current movement you do. And I'm not even talking about calcium or all the other ones. It's like you've extended the kinds of electricity that you can use. So because metal circuits that we build can't do that, they just use electrons, they can never achieve the same level of circuit complexity that a cell can, a biological system. So if recreating it in silicon isn't going to be as we see it in, in biology, You've seen plenty of sci-fi films. Which one gets it closest to being right? Yeah, I want to say like Ex Machina, right? But I have to say Transcendence, which is like the... It's so awful.
But I have to say this because in Transcendence, the, the kind of fun, the, spoiler alert, the point is that Johnny Depp gets uploaded and he changes, right? He his, his consciousness gets uploaded yes, inside the cloud. He yeah. dies, his consciousness gets uploaded and he changes. He's not the same Johnny Depp as he was before. Like, a bit. The, because you, if you were to create an electronic brain which had the processing power and the memory to, to hold all the information that you currently store in your brain, because it cannot work in the same way, if yes, you, it would if be, you were to upload your consciousness yes, to an electronic brain, then you, it, it would change. Yes, you you would have to necessarily have to be thinking in a different way. The processes would be different. So, it is like transcendence, and I am you know uh, just so sorry that it, it's. <laughs> Sorry, Ex Machina. You're a much better film, though. You are. Transcendence, you don't deserve to be in this YouTube video. Thank you for watching this video. It's the first one of its kind that I've made, and I'm really curious to see what I could do in the future with this format. In the description, I've included a link to the surprisingly detailed Wikipedia article about electrical currents in the brain, and also a link to Dr. Jennings' science communication project, Collab Lab. Thank you again for watching. Do give the video a like, and consider sharing it if you enjoyed it.